नम ओं स्थानवे नम ओं प्रभवे नम ओं भीमाय नम नमस्ते so let's talk about the first four chapters of the sati khanda of the rudra sanhita of shiva purana so these chapters are the story of what happened in the very beginning of the creation poor brahma you know <laughs> you really have to feel sorry for him he's mode of passion through and through rajaguna and as krishna says in bhagavad gita the rajaguna is based on intense feelings and passion and it leads to suffering and we see this perfectly embodied <laughs> in the personality of brahma i mean he is so powerful that literally whatever comes into his mind becomes an actual creation so at first he's in this contemplative mood and so from his mind he creates the seven sages and then he gets passionate and what happens he creates a beautiful woman sandhya Now this means whatever his mind comes up with becomes real. And I mean if you've ever paid any attention <laughs> to your mind <laughs> you know that this can be very dangerous, right? So in the case of Brahma <laughs> he starts thinking of of a beautiful woman and pop there she is. and of course he immediately becomes deluded by lust and also his seven sons and they start looking at her and she starts getting all excited and boom out from brahma's mind comes kama kama deva kama means lust and deva means god so kama dev is the god of lust and brahma says you will be so powerful that even vishnu and rudra and i will be targets of your arrows he has a bow made of sugar cane and arrows made of flowers and his arrows are like enjoyment and pleasure and attraction ha huh? and delusion and ultimately death so very early in the history of the universe brahma creates this lust this power that will be even bewildering to him and other demigods even vishnu even shiva sometimes becomes bewildered by it at least apparently <laughs> and what purpose does this serve well he has to populate the universe that's part of his job so i mean actually think about it is quite interesting god has designed male and females who are spontaneously attracted to one another in many different species and they go on creating new bodies new opportunities for spirit to take an embodiment and they populate the whole universe everywhere we look we find life so <laughs> this is really an amazing thing it's a wonderful thing and it shows the intelligence of god that he not only creates sexual reproduction but he makes it such a deep seated motivation 
that it drives so much of not only human, but all animal behavior. And this is the principle on which the whole world is founded, Shiva and Shakti. So that's kind of obvious, right? But now I want to take it a little bit deeper. Alex brought up the question of how to interpret these Puranic stories. And of course, my answer is it depends. <laughs> it depends on your state of consciousness, on your point of view. If you're in dualistic consciousness, well, then there are literal histories of the universe, the early days of the universe and the great sages and, and devotees. But if you're a bhakta, if you're on the next higher stage of consciousness, then they give guidelines for development of love of God by revealing the nature of the various forms of God. That Shiva incarnates in triple forms as Rudra, Vishnu, and Brahma to embody the three modes of material nature. Another great invention, right? These three modes of material nature are constantly vying and competing for supremacy in everyone's mind, in everyone's hearts, and in the universe in general. And that combined with this motivation coming from sex desire, Kama, is driving everything. It makes the world go round, literally. So what we see in these stories is revealing the character, the nature of the mentality of the various forms of God. And also his intelligence. I mean, it takes great intelligence to design something as wonderful and sophisticated as the universe. So, by the way, the, the Sanskrit word universe is Brahmanda. Brahma Anda. Uh -huh. Brahma's world. And Brahma's world is basically, I think, what we would call a solar system. It's not meant to be the entire universe of all, you know, so many billions of stars and galaxies and whatever. Um, I'm not sure what those things are when we look in a telescope. <laughs> I mean, I was really into astrophysics as a kid, even built my own telescope and so on. But those things may be illusions. They may be something that we mean, we may never reach the stars because maybe the stars are just kind of reflections in time of our own universe. Or maybe there are other universes and they have some completely alien forms of life. Who knows? I think it's really none of our business. And this is a trait of humanity and passion in general, that it gets mixed up in things that are none of his business. We follow our passions to our own detriment because they result in suffering. As is said in Bhagavad Gita, the result of the mode of passion is suffering. Why? Because from desire, lust develops. And from lust, anger develops. Because lust is never satisfied. It's like a fire. You can put as much fuel as you want on the fire, and the fire will consume it and still want more. Isn't it? So lust is like that. You can try to satisfy it, but it's never really satisfied. In fact, the more you try to satisfy it, the uh, higher and more profound it blazes. So lust, then, is illusion. And it leads us into suffering. But when the same lust is turned towards God, it becomes bhakti. It becomes love of God. And this is satisfying because it's not based on passion anymore. It's based on goodness. 
sattva, the original root of the word sat means truth, and it also means eternity, that which does not change. So when we become situated in goodness, we get promoted to the platform of bhakti, and then we can develop love of God. So for the person on the platform of bhakti, the Puranic stories help us to cultivate this love of God. Now, of course, in the next stage, the vivartavada, or sushupti consciousness, the yogic process is raja yoga, or meditation. And this turns everything upside down. Because from that view, this is all maya. This is all illusion. It's illusion because it's temporary. It's asat. It comes into existence and goes out of existence. The very fact that the universe has to be created means that it's not permanent. It's illusory because it doesn't really exist. It has to be created. That which really exists does not have to be created because it's eternal, beginningless and endless. And that, of course, is only Brahman. So one in the mode of meditation, Raja Yoga, is trying to penetrate to this ultimate truth. And in doing so, has to negate everything. Neti neti. Not this, not this. Like I was saying, if you watch your mind, <laughs> you'll find it so full of nonsense that you just have to throw it all out. You have to negate the whole thing. And when you finally do negate the whole thing, this is called shunyata, emptiness or nothingness. And in nothingness, the self is realized. This is why in the Devi Kalotra Tantra, Shiva recommends meditation on the void. This is exactly the same thing the Buddha taught. So after meditation on the void for some time, one realizes the self. After all, who or what is it that is aware of the void? Who is meditating on the void? So anyway, we leave this as an exercise for the viewer. <laughs> but when one finally realizes the self, then one is in Turiya, Turiya consciousness. This is self-realization. This is called the Ajatavada, the view that the universe is never born. Even though it apparently comes into existence, it's not real. It's simply a mirage, like water in the desert or the snake in the rope. It's simply Brahman, seen in a certain way, that makes it look like all kinds of phenomena, all kinds of multitudes of existence. So, for someone in the Vivartavada, practicing Raja Yoga, or someone in the Ajatavada, practicing Jnana Yoga, then these Puranic stories are simply metaphorical explanations of how the universe works the machinery under the hood, if you will. So this means that how we look at the uh, Puranas, oh, and then of course there's the atheistic person that thinks they're simply fairy tales that somebody made up and they're not true at all. They're just there to enforce some kind of religious standards on people. But we're not gonna talk about those idiots. They're not even on the scale. We're talking about the four levels of consciousness, Jagrat, Swapna, Sushupti, and Turiya. And these are the four levels of self-aware knowingness that lead to self-realization. And in any case, hearing the Puranas is pious activity 
and leads to the formation of subha karma, auspicious karma, that eventually leads one to complete self-realization. Aum Tat Sat. Aum Shakti Aum. Aum Namah Shivaya.